everyone welcome back to another video if you are new here my name is Ashley I'm a first-time mom and a stay-at-home mom as well I have a six month old and I am married my son is taking a little nap so I thought it'd be the perfect time to share my story my birth story um I'm gonna start off this video by saying everybody has their own um, birth story everybody has their own experience there is not a lot of negative experiences or bad experiences I've actually seen and heard of a lot of positive birth stories so do not let this discourage discourage you I don't really like to put negativity on my channel but um, I did want to share my birth story and my experience because it is a part of me it is something that happened to me so don't take this don't take my story and think that it's gonna happen to you it's very rare that anything bad would happen um usually births go really really great so um and i am healthy and alive and my son is healthy and alive we are doing great so that little bad experience that i had it was just in that moment but i'm very thankful that we're okay and um healthy now so the first thing that I wanted to, I actually wrote it down on my phone like I do with literally everything. But um, the first thing is Angel was measuring two or three weeks ahead um, my entire pregnancy. I went for my 10 week um, ultrasound and he was measuring right on track. And then every, every ultrasound after that he was measuring like three weeks ahead, one time four weeks, one time it was two weeks. So. He was measuring pretty big um, my whole pregnancy and then my stomach also was measuring really big so I was already preparing myself to have a big baby. I wanted to have a natural birth. I dr always dreamed of having a natural birth. I did not want an epidural. I wanted to try to do everything natural. I did not want to get induced. I wanted you know just to have a natural birth experience um, that was one thing that i was really like really strict on myself about did a lot of like research on natural births on hypnobirthing on like a whole bunch of different births um like p different positions to help like relieve the labor pain i was just pr i was practicing like my breathing and all that stuff i was like preparing myself to have a natural birth without an epidural so fast forward to february 3rd um i went to get induced they put like a tampon looking thing um, in my cervix and immediately I started contracting so bad like I had no breaks in between I was contracting extremely hard and they were a minute apart like I had no type of break at all it just like hit me out of nowhere because usually when you are having contractions your contractions they start off slow and then they start like inclining and stuff like that so mine didn't mine just I went like 0 to 100 in like literally five seconds because as soon as she put the tampon in my cervix like it just started my contractions everything started so um, I was like that contracting 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 for like I want to say like an hour and a half or two hours and I went from two centimeters to five centimeters in two hours and after I hit five centimeters, I was like, holy crap, this is so bad. Like, I couldn't even breathe with my contractions. I was trying so hard, and it was horrible. But I did say that I wanted to have no epidural, so I continued to push all the way up until I was six and a half centimeters. When I was six and a half centimeters, I was begging and screaming for the epidural because it was so painful. It was nothing like I even imagined, and I tried my hardest to not get an epidural but it was just I just couldn't do it anymore like the pain was too much for me and um, like I said I feel like because it went so fast I feel like I wasn't able to like prepare myself and like get myself ready so once I got the epidural the epidural let me tell you this is the craziest part so the anesthesi the anesthesiologist came in to do um my epidural and when he came in to do my epidural he put it inside of my spine and as soon as he did whatever he did i completely went blind like i saw black and i couldn't hear my ears were ringing and my heart rate was going up really 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 fast 
so the nurse i remember she kind of like grabbed my hand and was like what, what like what's wrong and i was like i can't see i can't hear i'm like having ringing in my ears and she was like oh my goodness stop and take it out to the anesthesi anesthesiologist so he took out the epidural and everything came back and i was looking at her like is this normal like what the heck just happened to me and she was like okay he just hit a blood vessel and she was like so um we're gonna try it one more time and at that point i was like really scared to try it again but the contractions were so bad that i was like i need to like have some type of pain relief like i can't take that pain so then um they d he tried it one more time and the same thing happened he hit another blood vessel which blows my mind as to how he did that twice but he did and then um my husband asked him you know is this normal because i didn't this time i didn't go like blind or anything i just started having ringing in my ears and one side of my leg went completely numb but the, i could feel everything else on the other side so he pulled it out again and he said, oh, this only happens to 4% of my patients. So here I'm like freaking out. I'm like 4% of your patients, so I'm the 4% that, you know, can this paralyze me? Like, I don't even want to do an epidural. I didn't even want to have an epidural to begin with. I told him I didn't want it anymore. And then he was like, are you sure? You know, if you say no, we can't do it again. You're already six centimeters. I think the cutoff is seven centimeters or something like that. And I was like, no, I don't want it. And then I had a really strong contraction. And I was like, you know what, forget it, just hurt, just do it again. If you mess up, I'm done. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to have to like push through these contractions. So he did it again. And this time he got it right. And um, I had the, the epidural and um, I couldn't feel anything from like the waist down. But I could still move my legs. A lot of people said they can't even feel their legs or move their legs or anything. But I could completely move my legs. Um... I just couldn't really feel much it was numb down there but the contractions um were still like really really strong because i could see it on the little um like the screen so i saw like my peak and i saw it go down and stuff like that so i knew that it was still really strong so i actually like started to fall asleep and when i fell asleep i heard like they rushed into the room and told everybody to get out they grabbed me and they get, like gave me a shot in my chest no no no. they gave me a shot in my arm um and like flipped me over and i was like what the heck and i looked at them and i'm like like what the heck is going on am i okay and they were like we can't find the baby's heartbeat and i was like what like i started freaking out and crying and i'm like what do you mean you can't find his heart like I started crying and they were like oh don't worry honey like and they were like trying to reassure me like it's okay um this happens sometimes and they were like messing with the monitor and stuff like that and they were like okay so um we found it or whatever and they were like that was a shot to stop your contractions because i think you're contracting too fast and too much for the baby that he's his heart rate was just slowly going down and then eventually like flatlined so um that was really really scary for me and traumatizing i really wanted them at that moment to just cut me open and take him out because i just felt like i didn't want to have to go through that again where his heart rate just goes down and or to zero so then everybody came back in the room and i went back on my right side and i was just like laying there just like thinking like when the heck is this going to be over and just praying that everything would be okay with me and the baby they came running in again and they said you cannot be on your right side he doesn't like the right side for some reason every time you go on your right side his heart rate starts dropping and i was like okay my mom was like does that mean my mom was like does that mean that the umbilical cord is wrapped around his neck and they were like oh no it just means he doesn't like that side and she was like actually i really don't think that that's the thing so i was like okay whatever i'm just gonna stay like a freaking statue on my um back so uh, so that i don't flip and i didn't go to sleep or anything like that because i was scared fast forward to like four hours later because i had angel in 15 hours so fast forward to like the actual delivery part um i just started to feel like i had to push and um i t i called them in let them know i feel like i have to push started pushing and I was pushing and pushing and pushing and he was not coming out for nothing so I continued um, to push and 
they put like a thermometer because I was pushing for so long. This was like an I was already an hour and a half into pushing, and they were like they put it. They checked my thermometer, my temperature, and I was like at 101. And they were like, okay, you're burning up. We need to get this baby out. My doctor, she um, put a mirror like down in that area so that I can see Angel coming out. I was pushing, 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 and I seen like his hair and it was so much hair it was so black and I was like holy cow and it did motivate me to push but it was frustrating at the same time because every time I was pushing he would move just a little bit and then he would kind of like go back and I was like this is, cannot be right like I don't think this is normal so my doctor grabs a vacuum she was getting ready to vacuum to suction him out of me and as soon as I saw that vacuum, I literally pushed with every single thing inside of me and he came out. And um, as soon as he came out, she put him on top of me and he was lifeless. Like, he wasn't moving, he wasn't screaming, he wasn't crying, his mouth was open. At that point, I was like, what the heck happened to my baby? Like, isn't he crying? Why... Is his mouth open? Why is he not like doing anything? So they grabbed him, they took him off of me and they put him inside of the little bed, the baby bed. They put him in that and they were like putting things down his throat and like patting his back, trying to get him to breathe. And um, his cord was wrapped around his neck twice. So they had to cut his cord um, around his neck. And that was why he wasn't breathing or anything when he came out because of the cord being wrapped around his neck. So um, they eventually got him to start breathing and stuff like that. And as soon as that happened, they put him on my chest and he immediately latched on. I did have a second degree cut. I was stitched up um, with 14 stitches all the way from the front to the back. So he ripped me completely. Um, the recovery process was very painful because of how much stitches I had um, I wasn't able to get up the first day but the second day I was you know better and the third day I was completely fine so um, yeah it was a pretty traumatizing experience for me um, just with like everything put together him not breathing um, the epidural gone wrong being um, high risk for preterm labor just all of that stuff combined was just super stressful after i had angel i told louise you have your son i'm done i am not giving birth again this was way too traumatizing for me um also i forgot to mention afterwards my heart rate was at like 178 um resting like 178 beats per minute resting so i had to have an echo on my heart to make sure my heart was okay it was just a lot for me and um it was just, you know, like scary and, st and stuff like that. So, like I said, I told Louise I'm done. And then fast forward six months later, I'm like, oh, I want Angel to be a little brother. So, <laughs> yeah, it, you completely forget about your experience. You completely forget um, how traumatizing it was or how much it hurt. Or you, you just forget it, literally. I forgot everything. So what I recommend and what I'm going to do differently is I will not be getting induced um, my next pregnancy. I will go all the way up until I completely can't anymore. I will try again to do a epidural free unmedicated birth. I will um, go to classes to learn how to breathe and all that stuff. So um, there's a lot of things that I'm gonna do differently in my next pregnancy, but it's all a learning experience. It was my first pregnancy, my first delivery, and like I said before, I'm just extremely happy that we're healthy and everything is good now. So yeah, guys, um, that is it for this video. I feel like this video is super, super long, so I'm going to cut it off here. Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Um, turn on your post notifications and leave a comment down below. Bye, guys.